Today in the news, AMD and Intel want to disrupt things and the new Xbox is slower than I thought. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD, this time with some info that comes directly from the company. During a briefing for the RX 5600 XT, the Radeon product management lead of the company indirectly gave us a little more info as to what to expect with Big Navi, and it's actually pretty interesting. Now, it's pretty clear what AMD's strategy has been since the release of the RX 5700 series. Grab the mainstream first. The 5700 series, for example, is meant to catch the 1440p, ultra-wide and high frame rate 1080p market. The 5500 series is passable 1080p, and the 5600 XT is, according to AMD, the 1080p king. As Mithun Chandra Sekar said during the briefing, with the Radeon 5000 series, we are essentially covering 90-something percent of the total PC gamers today. And so, that's the reason why no 4K right now. It's because the vast majority of them are 1440p and 1080p. The Radeon management lead also said that, similar to Ryzen, all of us need a thriving Radeon GPU ecosystem. So, are we going after 4K and going to similarly disrupt 4K? Absolutely, you can count on that, but that's all I can say for now. Two things from these quotes caught my attention. Even though the title says 5800 or 5900 XT, the fact that the Radeon management lead said that the 5000 series is meant to cover 90% of PC gamers, it probably means Big Navi is likely a 6000 series GPU, which makes sense. The second thing that caught my attention is the mention of disrupting 4K. When a card is called the king of a resolution, it usually means that all of the settings are maxed out when they are getting benchmarked. It also means that it can sustain a high frame rate continuously. I'll call that 90 to 120 FPS. If we look at the current fastest GPU, the 2080 Ti, it barely qualifies due to its inconsistent results ranging from 50 to 120 FPS at this resolution. Yes, it's a great GPU you the best, but it's not a 4K king. So if Big Navi is really the 4K disruptor AMD says it is, then it's going to be a monster. What do you guys think? I mean, all the rumors say that Big Navi will be twice as fast as the RX 5700 XT, and it kind of needs to, to be able to do what AMD says it will. Moving on, let's talk power supplies. They haven't really changed for consumer desktop PCs since Intel published the ATX standard back in 1995. It sure has evolved with more connectors, and it also has derivatives like SFX, but its roots of providing 12, 5, and 3.3 volt stayed the same through the years. Well, it looks like Intel wants to shake things up again after two and a half decades with a new design spec called ATX 12VO. This new spec would arrive this year and ditch the 5 and 3.3 volt supply for a single 12 volt. That's what the 12VO stands for, 12 volts only. ATX 12VO would simplify the circuitry a whole lot and can make power supplies cheaper and much, much smaller. Things like power connectors would also change with our chunky 24 pin connector getting reduced to a measly 10 pin. Here's a schematic of what this new connector would look like. Now, this seems like a good idea. Who doesn't want cheaper and smaller power supplies? But there is one small issue. While the smaller form factor might be beneficial, 5 volts for things like USB devices would still be required. So the motherboard would need its own VRMs to step down the voltage for these devices, meaning the cost would probably just shift from power supply to motherboard. Now, don't worry, we probably won't see those in the DIY space for a few years. This year, at least, the ATX 12VO standard will only be used on OEM systems, so your standard ATX power supply will live long and prosper. In console news, it looks like the Xbox Series X might feel a little last gen on the SSD side of things. An old Fizon employee has revealed that the Project Scarlet NVMe SSD uses the DRAM-less PS5 019E19 memory controller from Fizon. This controller has a max read speed of 3.75 gigabytes per second and the same speed on writes. Keep in mind that max doesn't mean actual. Most SSDs with that controller have reads of around 3.5 gigabytes per second and writes of 3 gigabytes per second. That's barely faster than most PCIe Gen 3 storage. Anyways, at least we got some photos of the front and the back of the Xbox Series X. One HDMI, one digital audio out, 
one ethernet port and two USB type A connectors. Oh, and of course power. That last rectangular thing is not a memory card slot or anything. It's basically a diagnostic port, which makes sense since, you know, this is a pre-production model. It also looks like the back of the device is removable too, which could be nice for replacing the SSD. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the news today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. You can leave your questions down below with the hashtag Q&A for this weekend's Q&A. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. By the way, I didn't tell you guys this, but I fell down 22 steps of stairs three times in the last week. My ass and my back are completely done. They're turned to mush. <laughs>